that song makes you uh, wonder. Because if our lives are supposed to be an offering to God, and everything that we do is supposed to be an offering to God, I wonder what kind of offering we are bringing. It's, it's not uh, about, not even uh, like money or things like that. No? Kasi according to what we've been reading in Romans chapter 12, no, if when we give our life to God, that is just the beginning point. Dun palang nag yung offering. Okay? Uh, so that means if you give your talent, but you haven't really given everything to God, that it ha- you haven't really given an offering. The Bible says in Romans 12 too, sabi niya, if you want to know the will of God, kung gusto mo daw malaman yung puso ng Panginoon para sa'yo, sino ba naman ang taong ayaw nun? No? Uh, if you want to know the heart of God for you, no? sabi niya, ano, uh, well, what you need to do is you need to start by giving your life to God. When you, when you get to a point in your life where you have done that for God, then sabi in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, you're just beginning. And when, however, when you begin to do that, only then will you know the full measure. Ang ganda na uh, we'll be reading a verse called the fullness of salvation, the fullness of everything, the full measure. Ni, napaisip ako nung inisip ko, sabi ko, ano ba yung ibig sabihin? Ibig sabihin, hindi pa ba ako, like, you know, once I give my life to God and it changes my life, so hindi pa ako saved talaga. Parang ganon? Hindi pa talaga ako child of God? Not really. We talks about the full salvation, the full measure. It means to, to reap the entire higher benefit of what God has desired for you and me. And we're not even talking about like heaven, pag namatay ka, you're going to heaven. Not talking about that. We're just talking about receiving, putting yourself in a position where you can receive the maximum of God's plan for your life. And according to Romans chapter 12 verse 2, ang ibig sabihin, ma-receive mo yung maximum of God's plan for your life. That means it's for you and I to find the will of God. And that will of God is always sub- good, acceptable, and perfect. We've studied that before. The good and the acceptable and perfect. Good means it's, it's for your benefit. No? Acceptable means it fits your life. Sinukat para sa'yo. Diba? And then what perfect means it will always work. Kahit na ano mangyari, it will always work. Pagka daw tayo sumunod sa Panginoon sa ganung paraan, to, to give to God everything in our life, not holding back anything as an offering, as the choir said, then we place ourselves in the position to know the will of God. Dun pa lang, dun pa lang. Dun pa lang. Pastor, is that like a one-time deal? No? Pwede bang one-time deal? Isang, isang bagsakan na lang? Pwede yung siguro kung credit card to, pay off mo ng loans mo, di ba? Hindi ganun eh. It's a daily, moment by moment, situation by situation thing. God wants each of us to be connected to Him on a moment by moment, daily, every situation thing in order for us to understand the full measure of what God wants for you and me. Kaya pala sinabi niya, pag naibigay mo na yung buong buhay ko sa akin, when you've given me your entire life, sabi niya, this is the least reasonable, my sense, reasonable act of worship. Dun ka palang nag-uumpisang mag-offering. Then I got to thinking, bakit nga naman ganun? Kailangan ba talagang lahat ganun? Kasi dun po sa time na yun, na pag binigay mo lang, wala nang, wala nang conflict. You remember about three weeks ago, we gave our first fruit offering. After you give the first fruit offering, to those of you who really gave your first fruit offering, wala na pong conflict after that. Bakit? Eh, nakay Lord na lahat eh. Kahit pumunta ka sa Mega Mall noong araw na yun, tululaway mo. No? 
Tama ba? For the next couple of days. No? Hanggang matapos yung, yung, yung span na yon of about, well, 24, about 10, approximately, you know, ha, two weeks to 10 days to 15 days to ganyan. No? May yung kuting hapit ka. Now, to those of you na nag, nagtatabi, ayos lang, walang basta ganang trip. Pero kahit na magtabi ka, nag ano ka pa rin eh. Nag, nag-iingat ka pa din, di ba? Maano ka pa rin, you're still careful. Bakit? Eh kasi, wala lang conflict, di ka na nag-iisip. You don't conflict anymore. Right? Don't conflict anymore. No? Sabi ko kayo ng umaga sa misis ko, tumatandaan ako. Bakit? Kasi, yung panganay ko si Yusot na yung mga sapatos ko. Alam niyo, para sa isang taong ganun, napakahalaga sa akin. Masama yun eh. O, konti lang ang mga private things in my life, you know. My shoes are one of them. Eh, natitipuhan. Eh, ano gagawin natin? Diba? Iniluwal natin sa mundo yan eh. Ayun, suot. Pag-pray niyo ako. Konti na lang eh. Konti na lang. Konti na lang. Pero nadali na yung dalawa na nadadali nito eh. Natamaan sa akin to. Panganay. Masakit nung kapa ako din yung babae. Yung isa naman, yung rubber shoes ko naman yung binabanatan. Talaga naman o. Oh. Konti na lang ang lamang. Pero wala ka nang pagdududa doon. Why? Kasi nga, eh, naibigay mo na lahat eh. There's no more conflict. So therefore, when you get to that point in your life, you're just beginning. Kasi ngayon, nakafocus ka na on just doing that. Now, some of you this morning came to church and you have some decisions to make. Maybe ibang decisions nyo long. It involves something long. Maybe your decisions nyo just over simple things that pag mali yung decision mo has the potential to long or to long and good or long and bad. Either way, in small things and in big things, God guides us into what the Bible says, and I will guide you into all truth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Important yun. Na, na, sino nakabasa nung ano? Lahat ng Rotary Club meron nun. The four-way test of truth. Uh, sa mga street style nyo, nakikita nyo yun, nakikita nyo yun. Kung member kayo ng Rotary Club, no offense, dito totoo yan. Okay? That's wrong. Is everyone happy? Kaya maguling bansa natin kasi inang basihan eh. Masaya ba lahat ng tao? Is it beneficial to all concerned? Una, that's impossible. Narinig niyo na ba yung hating magkapatid? Sino may mga kapatid dito alam niyo ibig sabihin nun? Yung pag nagpasalubong yung magulo, sinabi na nanay niyo, sa katatid niyo, oh hati kayo ha, alam niyo na. Meron mga mauutak. Meron mga mauutak sa bahay namin, si Lucas yan. Mauutak. Mautak. Oo. Mautak. Kunyari yung ice cream, luma ng konti. Di ba may tunaw na yelo sa ibabaw? Una, huli na ako, huli na ako. Sa mga kumakain ng ice cream, alam nyo kung bakit siya huli, tama? Sabi nga ni Franklin kagabi, hindi naman naman yung ginawa sa akin ng kapatid ko, dad. Kala ko kung anong injustice. Bakit? Eh yung mga yelo sa ibabaw ng ice cream, yun na napunta sa kanya. Yung totoong ice cream sa loob, yun na sa kuya, ang konti na nga lang sa akin eh. Konti nga lang, pero purong ice cream. Yung kanya ice candy. Hati mo kapatid, sa isang basong kok, ako sa ilalim, ikaw sa ibaba, una akong iinom. Hati mo kapatid. Alam niyo yun? Okay. Hati, alam, alam niyo yun, di ba? We all know what that means, right? Hati mo kapatid, ibig sabihin na pagpilian. Braso de Mercedes, akin yung gitna, sa yung puti. Alam niyo yun? Okay. Ako naman nagawa ko rin ng bata ako, dinudukol ko na kay loob. Ng... Ang tawag doon, hati mong kapatid. Naintindihan niyo na? Okay. Hati mong kapatid. Okay. Ganun eh, no? Ganun, no? But does it doesn't work that way. That doesn't work. So let's understand truth. Truth you get from the Word of God. We've been looking at in the series called Back to the Word. And last week we learned a few things, like I as promised, I'll try, try to have an interesting... Bakit mo nalagyan ng gano'ng paso ng interesting information about the Bible? 
itong buong season. Kasi some of you think that the Bible as some kind of book na wala namang nagbabasa na gato ganyan na hindi importante, okay? Uh, babasahin mo lang pag may problema ka, kahit di mo intindihan feeling mo, banal ka dahil nagbasa ka. So dahil doon may pogi points ka kay Jesus, susundin naman niya yung ginawa mo. Iba sa inyo, na nagkaroon ng problema sa relationship, yuksan mong ganoon, Lord, i-guide mo ko, nakalagay, at nagbigti si Judas. Ay Lord, wag naman yan. Ginanong mo, humayo ka at gawin mo rin. Nakalagay sa kabilang verse. Okay, iba sa inyo ganun eh, di ba? Oo, hindi ganun, okay? Alright, let's let's understand what the Bible says, what the Word says about growing, but before that, a few facts I wanted to show you, some interesting facts about the Word, or the Bible that you have in your hand, okay? There are more than, I, I repeated this last, this last week, kasi important to eh. more than 80,000 80, versions of the Bible, So kung may excuse ka na hindi mo maintindihan ang Bible, pili ka. 80,000 yan. That means uh, almost entire, the entire Manila, city of Manila and Mandaluyong put together can have one version each. That's a lot of versions, by the way. Okay? And, and almost every, every week, every month, may bagong version na nire-write based on a dialect. Okay? Kaibigan ko po yung supervise niya dito sa Pilipinas. All right. Um, it is the most circulated book. It finds itself in uh, most hotels all over the world and many military camps. America po, pinay-face out na yan. Totoo yan. Sa Pilipinas, salamat sa Panginoon, nakakapamigay pa rin tayo ng mga Bible sa mga eskwela. Alam nyo ba yun? Public school to. Okay? Kung gusto nyo gawin yan, kontakin yung mga local Gideon chapters. They give out Bibles to public schools. Okay. What else do we find out? Oh, here. Um, it's the most disputed book in the world. No other book has been hated so much. And yet, it still stands today. Interesting. Can you imagine? Marami na pong books that are out of print. Okay? Out of circulation. Ito po never goes out of circulation. Another one. The original language of the Bible is Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So kung may problema ka sa translation na binabasa ko, bumili ka ng Hebrew, Aramaic, at Greek na Bible, doon ka magbasa. Okay? Otherwise, dito na lang, kasi English at gumagamit pa ang Tagalog misan. Okay? Interesting. More and more Christians are reading the Bible less and less today than any other time in history. That's just crazy to me. More and more, even pastors are guilty of this. Sometimes I'm guilty of this. You know, we get so busy with stuff. We don't have time. We don't have time. I'm going to release for you, have, try to have a, 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 a tarp in the back. Alam niyo ba yung Bible reading plan? Paano mong babasahin for a whole year entire Bible? Pastor, binasa ko yung Bible ko cover to cover. Cover sa iba, bawa cover sa ilalim. Oh, Holy Bible, the end. Hindi yun. Meron pong, meron pong reading plan doon na madali lang. Okay? Yung mga sa iba nyo hindi mahilig magbasa. Nasa, i-google nyo lang. Eh. Pero maglalagay ako dyan ang suggestion. Meron kang mga plan eh. Ia, ano ka lang. Uh, BibleGateway.com One of my favorite ano, places. Hanap nyo reading plan. Gusto mo New Testament lang. Old, gusto mo chronological. Yung mga mahilig sa history. Chronological. Iba-ibang approach dyan. Promise you, one whole year. Simple lang. Oh. As in, they take Hindi yung Genesis, 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 hindi ganun. Lumulundag-lundag ka as they are related. Really good stuff. You talk about Genesis, anong related book niya sa ano, tapos i-relate mo ganun, tapos i-relate mo ganun hanggang New Testament. Paano nagko-connect yung mga ano, yung mga verse, yung mga verse na ginagamit doon. Galing, ganda. May iksi lang po yung reading. Won't take you more than 30 minutes a day. Sa traffic natin na to, ay nakukulang pa yun. Eh? Kahapon no, Sabado ng umaga, umalis ako ng maaga dumat. Uh, Sabado ng umaga, alas 8 ng umaga, umalis ako, dumating ako, alas gis. Simula dito hanggang SM North. Ano ba? Sabado ng umaga, pabalik po, dalawang oras din. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. Wala naman traffic at banggaan. Trip lang. Kakaiba Pilipino. Another thing we learned, this is a sad fact, is one, the shortest chapter in the Bible is, if you don't know yet, Psalm 117. So sa mga mayayabang dito, 
Memorizein mo yan, two or three verses lang yan. Pag binasa mo yan, sabihin mo sa mga kaibigan mo, may memorize na ako isang buong chapter ng Bible. Eh. It's just Psalm 117. It's the shortest. If you want, tingnan nyo. Pag bukas mo, tapos na. It's only that long. Pero kung large print yung Bible mo, ganon. Oo, kasi large print eh. Kung kapatid niyo po si Pastor Edward, yung iPad niya, malaki, pang isang verse lang, font 84, ganyan kalalaki yun. Sabi ko, bayaw hindi na iPad yan, billboard ang tawag dyan. Okay, kaya pala ayaw nyo mini, hindi mabasa. Lalaki talaga eh, grabe. Okay, it's the shortest, the long, eto, yung talaga gusto magyabang. Eto, banatan nyo to. Psalm 119, magbiyok sa mo yung Bible in the middle, boom! You will land at Psalm 119, more than likely. 70% of the time, bakit pastor, it has more than 150 verses. Long verses. Mga haba. Okay. Okay. The longest verse ever is F. Esther chapter 8, verse 9. Yung mahaba talaga yun. Quite. The shortest verse is John 11, 35. Yung gusto talaga mag-angas. Ha! Eh, wala is yung Bible. John 11, 35. Two words only. But two of the most meaningful ver- words in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus cried. Only two, only two, two words in the Bible. Jesus cried. But the reason why he cried is for you. Short verse. Two words only. Quite possibly the deepest, most important verses for man. Maybe other than the verse we read last week, which is John 11, John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Well, there's a few facts for you to understand. Okay. Now let's look at the Bible. How do I grow? We read this last week. We'll read it again this week. Today, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Dahil hindi ka kayo nagbabasa, sabi ko last week, magbabasa kayo, di ba? Okay, so magbabasa tayo ng Bible, ng malakas, na kailangan marinig ng katabi mo, doon sa kabila. Okay, ready? We'll read the first one, 2 Timothy. Ready and begin. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And begin. All Scripture. We'll be dwelling more on verse 16 today. This is reading from the NLT version. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Ready and begin. Like... God asks us to Apostle Peter to cry out. To cry out. Noon sa araw nakita namin si Ate Boram at si Pastor Paul sa ano sa sa mall. Naghahanap sila ng pampatigil ng cry. Kasi may alarm yung dalawang kambal nila pag umiyak yung isa, iyak yung isa. They're crying out and when they cry out, ayaw naman po nila yung gatas sa dede ni Pastor Paul. Yakult daw yun eh, ayaw nila noon. Bakit yo guard na? Okay. So, you know, they have an alarm. Kids cry for nourishment. Apostle Paul says, like a newborn babe, parang bago kong panganak na bata, cry out. Cry out. Cry out for this nourishment that comes from the Word. Let's understand. There's reasons why, and I'm going to read it again, kasi some of you and some of us are guilty of this. Bakit daw ang Bible ayaw basahin ng tao ngayon? In today's time, there's just several ones I put up there. The number one is an old book and it doesn't seem practical. It's an old book. Eh, parang hindi practical eh. Tulad ng sinabi ko, 80,000 po yan, pili ka. Second one, it takes too much work to do it. Hindi ako marunong. Hindi ako marunong. Mahirap. Hindi ako scholar. Okay? Third, I don't have the training to understand it. Kasi maraming secret, ano, di ba pastor yung Da Vinci Code? Una sa lahat, yung movie na yun has been proven that the author of the book is proven as a farce. Inimbento lang niya yung kanyang mga facts. Pinagdikit-dikit niya yung times and places in history. 
binuunya at isa na bisto siya. Nino pastor ng mga Bible, hindi po ng National Geographic magazine na is practically an atheistic, evolutionistic organization. In other words, pinatos nila yung kapwa nila. And they proved it to be farce. It is a farce. Okay? May isang Christian lumapit sa akin, sumikat yan. May dalang Da Vinci Code. Sabi niya, Pastor, paano po itong librong ito? Parang ang dami niya sinasabi. May hawak akong Bible. Eh, paano naman ito? Nabasa mo na ba lahat to? Hindi pa nga, Pastor, eh. Eh, pambira ka, binasa mo na itong, Bible, itong librong ito. Ito, hindi mo pa binabasa. Basahin mo muna ito, bago ito. Saka ka magtanong sa akin. Okay? I don't have the training so people don't read it. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Yan po ang isang kabulastugang sinungalingan ng Pilipino. Bakit, pastor? Kasi po, parating may traffic. You have a lot of time. Tama ba? Sa mga bumabiyahe po dito, ito ibig sabihin niya. Ako nga, pastor, sa bahay lang ako eh. Ay, di mas marami kang oras. Nasa bahay ka, di mo kailangan umandar. Tama? Yes. All of us have 24 hours in a day. Don't have the time, I, don't, I have my doubts. May pagdududa po ako dyan. Ang sagot ng Panginoon, okay lang. Okay lang. God did not come to earth through His Son to convince you. He came to love you. He was driven by love, not philosophy. It's not interesting enough. Di ka na interest? Punta ka sa Kings, Second Kings, may suntukan. First, Second Samuel is padahan. Dami nun, tsaka Chronicles. Exodus, mahaba ang kwento, telenovela. Pili ka, poetry, ang dami. No? Gusto mo mga dilubyo, yung mga end times, minor prophets. Dami, dami do end times. Mara, madami po yan. Huh? It's not interesting enough. Pastor, why are you doing it? Kasi I want you to understand how important the Bible is. Kung lahat siya ng pastors, the Bible, ano ba talaga yung Bible? Last week we understood, Mr. Flash, we understood that the Bible, first of all, is God's heart and mind expressed. We understood that last week. Ang Bible po, is the heart and mind of God expressed to you and I. We find that in John chapter 3, verse 16. Today we're going to talk about ano pa ba yung purpose ng Bible. The second purpose of the Bible is this, is that it teaches us how to live and mature according to His plan. The Bible teaches us how to live and mature according to His plan. No? Yung Bible... Uh, pinasikat tong acronym na ito isang contemporary Christian group called the Newsboys. Ang Bible daw ay basic instructions before leaving earth. Bago kakunin ng Panginoon, ito yung basic instructions mo para mabuhay. Okay? We can know His will. It is essential to your growth. It is essential to your growth. We read kanina 1 Peter chapter 2 and 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verse 16. I will say that to you now. Bakit siya importante in this way? Okay, Pastor, it teaches us how to live and mature according to His Word. We will see here in these verses kung anong sinasabi. That's where we will dwell in today. Okay? This is how the Bible can mature us, can move us, can do things for us, can put us in the perfect will ng Panginoon. Okay? Let's understand paano. We listened last week and we said that God breathed on man twice. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Ano ibig sabihin yung oh, the breath of God was given two times to man. Dalawang beses. The first one was in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 when He breathed on us life. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 
In creation, God said, and let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness. Talking to the triunity of the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and I quote here, it says, And God breathed on man. Breathed on man. Huh. On the nostrils of man, the breath of life. And what? The breath of life. And then it says continuously, And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. We need to understand, okay? Without God, we just exist. But we don't really live. Without God, the most powerful man stands alone. The most powerful man stands alone. Samson proved that to be true. The most powerful man, nung pinagtulungan na siya ng lahat ng tao, stood alone. Stood alone. In the same way here, God breathed into us the breath of life and man became a living soul. Pastor, are you saying pag Jesus Christ, dead soul ako, technically speaking, parang ganun na nga in spirit. Second is that He gave us the Bible. In 2 Timothy 3.16, sorry, typo. 3.16, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Yung word po na all scripture is given by inspiration. Yung word po na inspiration comes from the Greek word teopnustos, which means in Greek to breathe. So in other words, ang purpose po ng gawa ng paghinga ng Panginoon, okay, ha, is to give us life and also to teach us how to live. Kaya po it's for your growing and my growing. Ang Bible po, ang ating instruction kung paano tayong mabuhay. Paano tayong mabuhay? Meron pong taong buhay, pero pangit mabuhay. Tama? Kaya pag natapos ang araw, ang sinasabi mo ay, Hay buhay. Tama? Pastor, kasi po ako ang dami kong problema. Magpasalamat ka sa Panginoon. Kasi ang taong walang problema, patay. Opo, lahat ng mga wala na sa world, wala na silang problems. Bakit? Hindi na sila mag-iisip kung magdi-deodorant sila bukas. Baka magkaputok sila. Kasi wala na silang kilikili. They don't worry about having to eat. Wala na rin sila noon. Ngayon kung hindi ka nakakilala sa Panginoon, wala ka na rin noon. Kasi nililits yung manok ka na sa baba. No? The Bible is given to us to teach us how to live. Pastor, if, if the Bible is given to us to teach us how to live, how then do I live? That's nice. Let's look at the verses and study them. Pure word lang tayo. Let's just exegete properly. Okay? Basic instructions before leaving earth Anong purpose ng Bible para sa akin, Pastor? One, it is the source of spiritual strength. It is your source of spiritual strength. The strongest man without the word is weak. Bakit sabi sa, sa Peter, chapter 2, verse 2, like newborn babes desire the sincere milk. Tama? Huh? Desire the sincere milk. Parang bata. Sa mga nasa field po ng medicine dito, doctor owners, 
pag ang bata po ay pinanganak, ang nanay po nagpapasuso, konti lang ang gatas niya. Hindi pa siya pwede magtayo ng factory kasi konti pa lang. Pero meron pong ingredients yung gatas ng nanay for the first several days. I don't know how long, but di mo alam, pastor. Kasi po, hindi po yun ang postgraduate degree ko. And although animang anak ko, never po ako nagpasuso. Okay, so, di ko alam. Kahit alamin ko, sa libro lang. Head knowledge lang tayo, mga kapatid. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sabi ni iba, talaga? Di pa talaga. Huwag ka magulo. Okay, okay. Anong tawag doon sa mga nurse at nanay? It starts with the letter C. Its job is to fortify the immune system of the child para hindi kasi siya pwede bang bakunahan kaagad dahil baby pa yun, masyadong maliit pa siya. Anong tawag doon? Start with the letter C. Pastor, sabi ng mga lalaki, Serelac? Hindi. Lalaki ka nga. Letter C. It, ano, ano, ano? Colostomy, pastor? Di ba yung o-operahan ka? Tapos sasarahan yung put mo. Hindi po. Colostomy po iyon. Hindi po iyon. Okay. Colos. Sabi ng mga lalaki talaga yung mahilig sa anime. Colossus! Gulo mo yung mga babae nga lang. Tsaka mga doktor, doktor. Ah. Colostrum. Kakao kaunti. Such a small amount of milk. But packed. Packed with the immune systems of the child, for the child. Okay? That is what the Word of God, that's why Peter said, like a, anong klaseng babe? One-year-old babe? Hindi eh. Like ano daw a newborn babe. This ins- desires the, not just the milk of the Word, but the sincere or the pure milk of the Word of God, so that by it, you will experience the fullness of salvation. You see, the Word of God huh, is your source for spiritual strength. Kahit gano'ng kakatibay philosophically, gano'ng kakatibay morally, gano'ng kakatibay doctrinally and theologically, kahit gano'ng kakatibay, if you are spiritually weak, you will make bad decisions after bad decisions after bad decisions. Even the gigantic pastors that we hear falling on television all the time, hindi po ako exempted dun. Wala po exempted na pastor na sa pagkakamali. Bakit pastor? E tao po yan eh. But there's always only one reason why Christians, pastors, Giants fall, and we all fall the same way. It's when we are spiritually weak. Because, dalawang klase lang po ang milk. Sincere milk and insincere milk. Pure milk and impure milk. Ama? The Bible is your source of spiritual strength. You can't make decisions based on a purely physical, physical, head knowledge, ability-based decisions without affecting the spirit. Second, it will lead us to, a, to full potential. Notice what, the, what Peter chapter 2 verse 2 says. It says, a full experience I love that, how that is working. Can you go back there to the verse? Uh, can you put me on the ESV? Te? Uh, here, salikod. Sabi, like newborn babes. No, ang ganda ng wording this as a ESV. I, I, I love how it's worded there. Dito, crave. No, crave. Sa mga buntis, alam niyo yung crave. Sa mga lalaki dito na nabitiman na pagka-craving ng inyong asawa, nakikiramay ako sa inyo. Huwag kayong bitter. Anim na beses akong dumaan doon. Okay? Ayos lang. Dada, raraos din yan. Okay. Like newborn infants, long the pure, pure spiritual milk. What is the word? That by it, dahil doon, dahil sa 
word, you may, what's the word? Grow, grow up into salvation. I'm going to say something to you today and some of you are, going to, are not going to like it. Okay? But I'm in Christiana Dito. And all of us at one point in our life have done so. But I'm in saying, mga Christiana Dito, mayak maya, natitisod ka, mayak maya, naghihinanakit ka, mayak maya, kung anong pinag-iisip mo, mayak maya, negative ang utak mo, mayak maya, talo ka, mayak maya, basag ka, grow up! Grow up. Kasi pastor, kaya ako nagkagayto kasi si ganito eh. Kasi si ganyan eh. Kasi yung nanay ko. Tsaka yung tatay, grow up! Ang dami mong, naisip niyo ang bata, lahat ng bagay may excuse except personal responsibility. Sa mga magulang alam niyo yan, a child will give every excuse for his faults, except take personal responsibility. In Tagalog, lahat ng klaseng dahilan gagawin ng bata, ha, maliban lang sa pagtanggap ng personal na responsibilidad sa mga pangyayari. Anong kinakailangan ng bata para matuto? He needs to grow up. He needs to grow up. How will he grow up if his mind is immature? And the Bible says, how do you mature? By looking at the Word. I don't care where you stand in the Word. My doubts come, my ganito. Say everything you want about the Bible. But the Bible never fails to give good advice. Kahit atheist ka pa, Brad. Wala kang makikita ang bagay tungkol sa pag-aalaga ng bata, ng relasyon sa asawa, ng pera, ng pagdesisyon, ng paggawa sa buhay. Nasa Bible lahat yun. If for anything else, it gives great advice. Yung pilosopo dito may konting alam sa Bible. Sasabi, bakit pastor? Sinabi doon sa Levitico. Ah, gusto mong mularo ng ganon. Lapitan mo ako mamaya. May nagtanong sa akin yan. Eh bakit sabi, pastor? Sa Leviticus, pagka doon ano, nagalit, putulim yung kamay mo. Tapos, pag yung mata mo, dukutin mo, pag nagkakasala ka, pwede ba yun? Sabi ko, pwede kung gusto mo eh. Yan pala trip mo eh. Walang pa sa ganang trip. Akin, may martilyo ko dito. Manhidi na muna natin. Diba? A full experience. What mean full experience? It means you're able to stand in difficult times with confidence because you know God controls all things. God controls all things. Pwede kang tumayo kahit ang gulo-gulo, kahit parang kulang, kahit parang ano, last week iba sa inyo na problema, pastor. Ang dami kong kahilangan, ganito, 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 ganito. Hindi ko alam kung ano gagawin dito, 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 dito. Linggo na, buhay ka pa. Mabait si Lord, tama? Pastor, di ba ako makain? Sabi ni Lord, mag-cleansing diet ka daw. Pastor, sobrang kagutom sa bahay ng breakfast namin, lollipop. Maturity. Nagpunta kami ng divisor, I have to share this with you. Nagpunta kami ng divisor last week, sinama ko yung misis ko. We were sitting there and um, um, eating doon sa cafeteria sa taas, no? Makain kami. Ang kinakain ko lang naman doon, ang pala at saka Mickey Bihon parate. That's all I eat anyway. So anyway, we're eating. This little girl comes up and she comes up and she says, Sabi niya, Sir, okay lang ba ako nilang maglinis din ng mga pinagkainan niyo? Kasi sila, ma'am, umalis na sila, ati Isa, ako lang lang iwan. Okay lang po ba ako nilang maglinis ng pinagkainan niyo? Little girl, very discreet, nagpopo, ganyan. Sabi ko, ah, okay. Pero sir, pwede po ba akin nilang yung mga tira niyo? Kasi po, hindi na kaya na ni Pastor Jones na Calvin Klein model lahat ng mga kanin namin. Kasi hindi naman ako nagkakanin talaga. Misis ko, kaya ganyan itsura niya, inaamoy lang niya yung mga pagkain, hindi naman niya nginunguya. 
Pokoknya kung ngayon niya, tapos pre, luluwa na niya ulit. Kaya hindi tumataba eh. Puro sabaw lang ang napapala sa buhay niyan. Ayoko na magkaganon. Ganyan nga itsura mo. Isirable ka naman sa buhay. Huwag na lang. Si Lord na bahala sa akin. Anyway, so, yeah. oh, ang dessert niya, bubble gum, mentos, ganon. Wala naman let's eat flavor ng mentos, di ba? O oh, wala. So, kung mga sabi, so, sabi ko, ah, uh, okay. So, ginawa niya, kinuha niya yung mga rice, untouched yung isang medyo malaki, tapos inipo niya ganyan, tapos may tirang isang, ano yan? Bok choy, isang stock ng bok, ano yung Tagalog ng bok? Pechay. No, na, tinan niyo, pechay? Makakain kami naman sa pagkain ng isko, pechay. Ano yung rabbit? Anyway, so pechay. <laughs> pechay, nilagay na ganun. Hindi nga pang tao yun eh, pang hayop yun, kaya nga vegetable eh. So nilagay na ganun, pechay. May kote sa bao, inipi sa bao. Tinaob silang kapatid niya, a little bit older than her. They're about 9, 10, 11 years old. Hati silang dalawa. Okay, hati silang dalawa. Para hindi silang paalis. Just before, may isang binata, makisig ang katawan, sabi sa hati, Sir, sir. Ah, wala. Wala kang papala sa akin sa ganun. Bakit? Laki-laki ng katawan mo eh. Nasa divisory tayo, lahat ng tao doon may trabaho. Tama? Kundi gumagawa ng basura, nagpupulot ng basura, pero lahat may trabaho. Tama? Okay. Wrong place to ask me, right? But these two girls, they start to eat whatever was left over, right? Sabi ko, masipag itong mga bata to. So I went back to the ano, line, bumili ko ng meal, malaki-laki yung meal na kinuha ko, pumunta ako doon, nilapag ko sa harapan nila. Kulang yan. Kain pa kayo. Nag-aaral ba kayong dalawa? Opo, panghapon. Bukka mag-a-absent. Pwede niya ulitin yan. Meanwhile, kain kayo. So, isang bata, naiyak siya. Isang bata, medyo matabay. Isang bata ng konti. Masaya. Dalawang reaction. Pareho masaya. Isa umiyak. Isa, naiyak sa tuwa. So, kain pareho. Kain. Trabaho kayo. Ito, ito. What, what am I trying to do? What am I trying to do? What do you think I'm trying to do? And trying to teach you to understand that kahit na pangit yung nangyayari sa buong mundo, ah, there's a God who's in control. Mag-church kayo. Ah, mag-church kayo. Hanapin niyo si Jesus. That's all I said. I didn't indoctrinate them. I didn't tell them to come to Mandalu yung hello, nasa divisorya kami, layo nun. Mag-church kayo. Hanapin niyo si Jesus. Sabi niya. Sabi ko, sa kanya galing to. That's all I said. End of story. I'm trying to teach these kids that I don't know them. That what I'm doing is not because I'm a nice guy. They don't even know my name. I didn't give me, show my card or pakita lang ID, taga sa anak ko. I didn't do that. I wanted them to understand uh, that they can be confident in Christ. At tawag doon maturity. Nakakita Ang hindi basta-basta matinag. Kasi he understands that his father is in control. No? What else do we understand about the word? What else does it do? It will teach you to know the truth. It will guide you into all truth in this deceiving world through discernment of the Holy Spirit. It will guide you into all truth. Timothy 3.16 All scripture is God breathed of snustos. By inspiration of God. And it is profitable for reproof, hmm? for teaching you the truth. What an important statement that is. It is useful to teach us what is true, making us realize what is wrong. Saan, Pastor? In our lives, it teaches you the truth. Truth. This world will teach you a lie. Ang definition ng world ng success is never ending. Never ka magiging masaya. Ang definition ng world ng enough, di din niya alam. It will teach you the truth. Huh? In this world, tuturuan ka. Gusto mong gumanda yung buhay? Gusto yung umaman? Achieve for the highest success. You want to read the Bible? Tell you the truth? The Bible says, you want your life to be comfortable? Be faithful with what God has given to you. Magkaiba. The world says, pagyamanin mo, look for the greener pastures, 
look for the next promotion, mag-abroad ka, mag ka, mag ka, the Bible says, be faithful with what you have. For if you are faithful in small, then I will give you something bigger. If you are faithful with what I have given, with what somebody else has given to you, then I will give you what is yours. Kaya eh, maraming kristyano hindi napapaayos ang buhay. Bakit, pastor? E kung hindi ka nga tapat, doon sa hindi sa'yo, hindi ka bibigyan na sa'yo. Now, tumingin ngayon kayo doon sa mga multimilyonaryo sa mundo na matinong ang buhay. And they live, and they're not Christians, most of them, but they practically live the same way. They're faithful with what they have. Alam niyo ba sa atin kaya hindi lumalago kung yung binigay ng Panginoon? Kasi habang nagtatrabaho ka, nakatikakasabi mo eh. Tama? You're looking across the table, across the office, across the company, your friends sa paligid. Kaibigan ko, yaman na. Yung gato, gato. Yung gato, gato. Pwede ba? Ang atupagin mo, yun na sa plato mo. Doon ang pagpapahala ng Diyos. The blessing of God is what's on the plate. Itong buwan po na to, anniversary year natin, ng ministries natin. This church, nagsimula sa labas ng gate namin doon sa likod, na pumasok doon sa unang pintuan, na lumaki ang gagaray, nandito. This church, and this ministry, and this school, God has used to plant a church in every continent in the world except for Antarctica dahil ayaw pumunta ni Pastor Jomstone. Ito ang maliit talaga sa Mandaluyong. Ma, bakit po? Kasi naging tapat biblical principle with what God has given. will teach you to know the truth. What else will it do, Pastor? It will correct your direction. Look at the, uh, what, let's go back to the wording. Sabi niya, all scripture is given, is inspired by God, and is useful to teach us what is true, to make real, is realize what is wrong. It corrects us when we are wrong. Alam niyo yung word na to correct? All scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for reproof, for correction, Ha? Hindi po ibig sabihin nun masama. Ibig sabihin lang po nun, nagtutuwid. In the Greek word, it means to straighten. Magkaiba po yung punishment at saka straighten. Ulit, magkaiba po ang punishment at saka straighten. Many of us desire to do right, are going the right direction, but it's not exactly where it needs to be. The word will straighten. It will straighten you. Pag kumukulot yung buhay mo, uunatin ka. Ito lang alam ko eh, walang gustong magpauna. It's uncomfortable. It's painful. It will cause losses. But it's always for your good, as we learned last time. God is motivated by love, always. Lastly, it will chastise and discipline you. Bakit, Pastor? It will expose your wrong choices and teach you to do what is right. It will mold you into being Christ-like. Notice what it says again. It corrects us when we are wrong. It teaches us to do what is right. No? It will correct us when we are wrong. It will teach us to do what is right. Nasabukan niyo na po ba na kayo ay masaway pero hindi naman tinuro sa inyo yung tama? Di ba frustrating? Nagkaroon na ba kayo ng teacher na ganon? No? Yung pag nag-check ng quiz. Tama? 
Kasi sabi lang sa iyo mali, hindi na tuturo sa iyo paano gagawin. No? Nung college po ako, medyo hindi ako mabait. Nung una pa lang kasi suwail ako sa Panginoon. Eh, eh meron kaming ano, college algebra. Alam niyo po, pwede kay Pastor Dudes. Pastor Dudes po pinanganak niya, may kakambal na calculator. Ako po hindi. Okay? Ako po, pinanganak ako, may scientific calculator na nakakam- nakakambal. Opo, pero walang battery. Saka sira yung circuit board. Opo. Okay, so, so, pero si Pastor Dudes, kahit walang battery, umaandar yan. Okay? So, ako naman, college algebra required class, so I'll take it. So, sabi ng ano, my dreaded moment, sabi ng professor, Mr. Tika, would you come and solve the board? Alam nyo kasi sa akin yung X, dapat hindi mo na sinosolve yung X kasi nakalipas na yon. Yung mga sa iba sa inyo, sabi ni Pastor Dudes, ano daw, ano daw? Bakit natin na ano? Si, sabi ko sa inyo eh. Sabi ni Ate, ay nakao Dudes, yung ex, yung dati mo. O, sabi ni Pastor uh, si Ate Ate na, ay ako na, hindi na iyon. O, sabi ni Ate Mirna, don't solve for X, it's in the past. Sabi ng professor ko, is solve for, natatapakan ko, sorry. Solve on the board. And I'm like, ah, patay, patay, patay. So, nag-solve ngayon ako. Tapos sa masakit nun, to make matters worse for me, he calls on three other classmates. Na lahat sila yung parang aquarium yung salamin. I, we, when I was in college, this is bad. Mga bata, huwag kayong kagaya dito, ha. We call them the nerd herd. Oh, sila yung mga tupa ng mga nerds. Okay. Sila, member si ng math club. I'm sorry kung may mga member ng math club dito. Ang hobby nila ay mag-solve ng mga problema na hindi kayang isolve. Okay? Ako po, madali ko sagutin yan eh. Ibigay kay Lord. Diba? Huwag niyo nang problemahin. Ibigay mo na kay Lord. O, eh, pinasolve ka! I'm on the board and I'm solving this thing. Sila, tututututang! May, may ganun pa eh. May ganun. Ako din, gumawin ako. Bang! Sa galip. Pigarong kulit na ito. Diba? So, tukoy ko lang ito, black bull na ito, tapos ang problema natin. Tagal, tagal ko, man. Took forever to solve that thing. I'm just solving and solving. I can't get a hold of that thing. I was like, alam mo yung nakakahiya na? Yung pinapawisa ka doon ng malapot. Parang nasi-CR ka, pero hindi ka naman talaga nasi-CR. I mean, man, you're in trouble. I kept solving and solving and solving, solving and solving. Could not... Could not, could not, could not. Five I said, but sir, I, I give up. Can't do it. Sagot ba naman ng professor ko na presidente ng mga nerd herd? Sabi niya, it's okay, James. If you don't, if you can't solve that, maybe you're just not good with, with math. Like, oh, yes, sir, I'm, I'm not very good at math. Maybe one day you could find a job, you know, with your hands. Like some manual labor stuff. Now, ako po, kung kilala niyo ako, pag may taong nagbabasura, iginagalang ko yan. Bakit? Kasi natatrabaho. In fact, if you're around me, if I see that, I will tell my kids, kita mo yung mga ba- anak na yan, mga tao na yan, gagalang niyan. yan. Bakit? Kasi yung mga yan, kahit nagbabasura, natatrabaho. Pag kayo matanda na, Ha? at tatamad-tamad kayo, tutungkod ako, tatayo ko may tungkod, iahataw ko sa inyo, ang trabaho kayo. Okay. So, na. Pero kamo ng college ako, tapos pagmamanual labor mo ako, first year college ka agad, pinatay mo naman yung pangarap ko kagad. You know? Gusto ko man maging doktor, o kondoktor, kahit alindol, basta, isang math problem lang. Di ba? Pinagmanual mo na kagad ako. And I said in my sweet Christian sheepish-like voice. Tumungo ako, may content tears, tapos sabi ko, yung tagalog, pigal akong kanuka sa paking kita dyan, makita mo, hinahanap mo eh. Hindi pa ako masyado mo save doon, kaya patawarin niyo na po, opo. Opo. And sabi nung kano, excuse me, what did you say? I don't think I like what you said. Sabi ko, it's in Tagalog, you don't know the answer, but maybe one day you can do manual labor. na office po ako noon. Na, na. Eh mga bata, huwag kayong gagaya. Gayahin nyo. Nag-mature na ako eh. Pag hindi kaya, 
Very good. Very good. The Bible will chastise you, man. Alam niyo yung chastise? Hindi lang po yung hinahataw ka. Pero nakarinig na ba kayo ng preaching o nakabasa kayo ng Bible na parang feeling mo hinahataw ka? Have you ever read the Word and the Word is telling you, Psst, mali ka, Brad. Have you ever had that? Have you ever had a moment in your life where the Holy Spirit through the Word of God tells you, you are wrong. If you die, you're going to hell. Huh? If you don't change, you will mess up your life. If you don't follow me, you will mess up your plans. Have you ever had that? Because if you haven't, then you're not reading the word. Because this is one thing I understood. Because if you follow God and his word, expect him to disagree with you. If you follow God and his word, expect him to disagree with you. He may agree with you sa umpisa, but as you follow along, and lumili ko ka na, kumukorbata ka, He will stretch you, and mold you, and stretch you again, kasi lumili siya ka na, and He will disagree with you. But if you follow God, if you follow God, and His Word, expect God to disagree with you. Huwag kang maghanap ng verse na kakampi sa'yo, dahil sa umpisa lang yan, after a while, when your heart begins to stray, he will disagree with you. And if you allow him, he will mold you. Ang problem na maraming church people ngayon is nagahanap tayo, listen to me, nagahanap tayo ng mga church na kakampi sa atin. Pag gumawa ka ng kalokohan sa church na to, lilipat ka sa kabila. Kung gusto mo lumipat, wala kang problema, Brad. Bigyan kita pa masahe. Bibigyan pa kita ng pastoral recommendation. I've done that. Kasi ang gulo mo rito sa church eh. Ang dami na ang masamang tao dito, dadagdag ka pa. At least yung mga masamang tao nandito sa IBC, alam natin masamang tao tayo. Kung wala po si Kristo, talamak tayo lahat. Problema na maraming Christians today, we look for places and churches that will agree with us, will agree with our lifestyle, will agree with what we want. It's time to look at the Word. And what does the Word say? Bakit, Pastor? Kasi ayoko. Because when God chastises and disciplines you, it's always love that comes with it. In this church, we try our best that when we correct, we correct. Sometimes it's rough, correcting. Alam pag matigas ang ulo. Pero pag gusto mo nang mag-ayos, nandito pa rin kami. The track record has proven itself too much. We've had people here who've done horrendous things. Things that in me as a person, in other countries, dapat nakakulong ka na. But when in jail, and your heart is right with God, I'll come and we'll come and visit with you. And pray with you. And help things to be right with you. Why, Pastor? Because that's what the Word of God says. And that's how Jesus says. Bakit ba? Lahat ba ng sumab- mga salbay sa Bible? Sinabi ng Panginoon, okay, just come as you are. Okay lang. Come to me. You don't have to change. Hindi. Jesus says, if anyone comes after me, Take up a cross. Follow me. Follow me. Sulit ka sa akin. Sulit ka sa akin. Whoever wants a cross, nobody does. But that's how you follow God. If you follow God and His Word, expect Him to disagree with you. Here's the truth, and I want you to stay with me here. I'm done. If you want life to work out for your good, Realize that you can't decide how, where, and what to do to live for God. Let Him decide. Let Him decide. Let Him decide. Read the Word and follow. Read the Word and follow. Sometimes you have to tell your heart, follow, heart, follow. 
I do that. To me, that's a conscious choice. You know? Sometimes I'll tell the Lord, the, in my heart, James, follow, just follow, just follow. Means some may not follow, but you follow. You have to follow. You follow. Bakit? Because if I expect life to work out for me and for my good, I have to realize that I can't make decisions how and where I am and how to live for God. Hindi ako pwede mag-decide ng paano. Let Him decide. Read the Word and follow. Read the Word and follow. Read the Word and follow. Let me give an example. And with that, I close. Nung time with Jesus, Jesus started His ministry with a bang. He turned the water into wine. Wow! Grabe. In a worldly speak, productory party mo, inuman ka agad. He turned the water into wine. Wow, that's pretty heavy stuff. And then he, he starts to feed the 5,000. Actually, more than 5,000. It's estimated about, about 20,000. Nagpapakain siya dami. So because of that, people were like, Wow, man. Sunod tayo kay Jesus. Si Kato Brad. I mean, Jesus was starting a mega church. Of mega proportions. So, so incredible was the Jesus movement during his time. The, 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 the religious people and the, the Romans were getting worried. Because Jesus was talking about starting a kingdom. He said, I will start a kingdom. Wow, start a kingdom, really? And I will establish a kingdom. By that time, the Romans were cruel people. Incredibly cruel people. And when I start a kingdom, that's what he said. That's what he said. So then people were begin to think, Uy, start a kingdom. See, David's kingdom, ito na yun. Ito na yung prophesied that the throne of David will be restored. Because Jesus came from the line of David. Ito na yun. So much so that James and John, remember, yung mga kapatid, they're called the sons of thunder. nag sila one day. Yung mga marunong Bible, you know what happened, right? nag sila, sabi isa, Jesus, pwede ba, when you start your kingdom, dun ako sa kanan. Tapos dun ako sa kabila. Yung nana nila, umepal din. No? Yung nanay, super stage mother. So, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Pwede pa yung si James sa kanan, tapos si John sa kaliwa. Ibig sabihin, sila, kasi everybody wanted in on the kingdom of God. Because they thought he was going to establish a kingdom, right? Right. So, everybody's in, man. You got thousands of people following. And daming miracles. They're all sitting there. Ang galing, right? Right. Right. And then one day, Jesus says this. And he says, if you want to follow me, take up a cross. Oops. Take up a cross. What did he say? Bakit cross? Akala ko ba rebellious kingdom? We will rule, you know? We will take back, kick out the, M- the Romans. Bakit take up a cross? Take, take, take up a cross. Eh, yung cross po, capital punishment yung unang panahon. If you want to follow me, die on the electric chair. Ibig sabihin nun, take up a cross. And everybody's worried now. Maraming bulong. Ano daw, ano daw. And it gets worse. It gets really worse. What's worse is then he says, if you want to follow me, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Sabi ng mga tao, <laughs> mali yung napuntahan natin na church. No? Parang dati may pumasok dito sa church, tapos nag-worship, eh, ang kulit kasi si Paolo nun, ang haba pa ng buhok, naglilid ng worship, pumasok, naglilid. Sabi sa mga asher natin, dito po ba yung Baptist, dito po ba yung Baptist Church? Opo, pagpasok ang ingay ni Pao, tumutugtog. Yung mga tapa pa, palakpak, labas ulit, hindi po pala ito, iba pala. Ganun yun na yung mga feeling nila. <laughs> if you want to follow me, Jesus says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. He's talking about the Lord's table. It was symbolical. And everybody's like, okay, <laughs> you know, atas na tayo. Cannibalism na to, iba na to, and the people start to back up. And the word of God says, this is what the word of God says, and at that time, people start to unfollow Jesus. Medyo, ay, this is too much. It's like, you're reading the word of God. Ay, too much, too much. Parang pangingi, alam na na simbahan to. Una kapatid, Bible yan, di simbahan. Di nagbabago yan. Pinamumunahan na yung pamumuhay ko. Bible yan, kapatid. Itayo mo sa Bible. Kung di yung makin sa Bible, tabi mo. And people were like, ah, we're in trouble. 
we're in trouble, you know. Kayo anong gagawin niya if you were like that? You're following Jesus. He's your leader. He's your leader. You left everything. Si Matthew was an accountant. He left counting. Huh? Peter, James, and John were businessmen, fishermen. Iniwan lahat yun. No? Lahat sila may kanya-kanyang trabaho. Iniwan nila lahat yung ginagawa nila. Right? Si Judas was magdanakaw. Iniwan yung trabaho niya. Ginibap niya. Mula si Sakya po. Sa Divisoria. Trouble. Because this time, Jesus got weird. It's a little bit too radical. Kayo, anong gagawin nyo kay Jesus ganon? Will you say, Jesus, basta tayong dalawa. I believe you. This is the first time these guys have heard this stuff too. Now, if I were Jesus, if I were the disciples, I would say, Jesus, Jesus, easy ka lang. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, umaalis na po sila. Bakit? Because at that time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted to kill Jesus already. And the only reason why they could not kill him was because there were thousands of people between them. Maraming magpo-protect. If they were to kill Jesus then, magiging national hero siya. So they couldn't kill him. So now that the people were backing away from Jesus, sabi ng mga Pharisees, <laughs> Here you go, here you go. Magkakamali na yan. Inaabasad. I, I would say to Jesus, Easy ka lang, masyadong heavy yung preaching mo kasi yung mga kalaban natin, yari tayo dyan. No, they would kill us. Right? Yeah. And the kalisa yung mga tao, they all left. They all left. They all left. Jesus had these words. It's incredible. Very, ano, mapapaisip ka eh. And this is a word that Jesus says to you and me. Often. Sabi ni Jesus, will, listen, you also leave me. Ako ba iwan mo rin? Di ka na rin susunod sa akin. Maybe ba sa inyo, Jesus is asking you about that because meron kang priorities. And Jesus is saying, magpapalit mo ako dyan. Maybe ba sa inyo, mga bata-bata dito, relationships. Iwan mo rin ako, you're gonna leave me. Maybe sa inyo, kontrata lang eh. I- I- iwan mo ba ako? Dahil dyan. Maybe sa inyo, you read the word of God and the word of God says, ito yung gawin mo. Pero sabi ng dyan yung iba. And, and, and you say, uh, Lord, and Jesus says to you and me, will you also leave me? And then Peter said something incredible. For a guy na, alam mo si Peter, pabugso-bugso ng damdamin, di ba? Unpredictable sometimes. Peter says this, one of the most one of those incredible, heart-opening words. And Peter said these words. Sabi niya, Master, Jesus, sabi niya, we have given up everything. Where else shall we go? Kanino pa ba kami upunta? Kasi mga kapatid, ganito yan eh. Dalawa lang kasi eh. It's either you're following God Huh? If you're going this way and you back up, you're going to hit something else. Tama ba? We don't get to stay in the middle. Wala tayong luxury to be in the middle. You're either following God, following God hard, radically following God. You pull away and you back away from God and you hit something else. And you follow that. It's never... Jesus, pull off muna tayo. He's not your girlfriend. He's your savior. So you either follow him or you don't follow at all. Either you follow his word and grow up or you back away and have a tantrum maglupasayka as a child. And Peter said, Lord, Iniwan na namin po lahat. Saan pa ba kami pupunta? Some of us, maybe today, maybe you're a follower of Christ, but for some reason, God has led you into an aspect of your life. Maybe hindi lahat. 
maybe it's in it's in your in your business or in your relationship or in your uh, uh, with your friends or your decisions that you need to make, as I said earlier today. And everything is not good. Maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you're sad. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're going to go. Can I ask you to get into the Word of God and let the Word of God get into you and follow what He says? Maybe some of us need to make that prayer today. Lord, San pa ba ako pupunta? Kasi kung hindi naman ako susunod sa inyo, wala naman po akong pupuntahan. Dalawa lang yan. Either Panginoon or the black guy na meron tinitur. Sombrero. It's only two. Only two. The Bible molds us so we can become Christ-like. Righteous people means people who choose right. About three weeks ago, I was at that position again. All of you are not are familiar with that. My son, third autoimmune disease. Third autoimmune disease. Tatlo. Sabi ng doktor, yung isa lang ho, rare na eh. Tumatlo pa anak nyo in two years time. Two to three years time. Masakit doon, bad timing. The timing and I was also sick. So we take him to the emergency room and I had no time to be discouraged kasi my, yung anak ko sumasabog yung mga blood vessels sa paa and in complete pain. And yung, 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 yung binti niya kasi laki ng ankles niya and hindi namin maintindihan kung ano nangyari. Pag ganun kagulo, I, you don't have time to be depressed kasi magulo eh. Oh. But as the night went on, pang alim na alaksan ata, o ano man yung iniinom ko, paracetamol, I don't know what it is. Kulang na lang, pagsabayan ko na kung ano-ano iba eh, di ba? Uh, masakit na yung katawa mo kung ano-ano. As the night went on, I had to be at the house and I was knocked out for like three days. Babangon lang ako para umihi, kumain, tulog ulit. Knocked out for three days. And about the second day, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I was getting really flustered. I was really, really, really irritated. Masakit na yung katawan mo, tapos yung anak mo nandun, and then you find out na another thing, and, and I, I began to grumble. Pastor began to grumble. Lord, ano ba? Naglilingkod naman ako sa'yo, dahil mo nung ginagawa. Lahat sa'yo na, eskwelahan sa'yo din. Lahat naman kami kinikita dyan. Sa'yo na yun. Yung church sa'yo, lahat sa'yo, lahat. Binigay naman lahat. Wala naman tayong problema, Lord, di ba? Okay naman tayo lahat, you know? Ano pa ho ba gusto nyo? And I began, I wasn't rebelling at the Lord. I was just asking why. Baka naman pwede. Baka naman pwede. Ano mo, ba't naman ganito? Labi ka ito. Rumble, ano mo, rumble, ano mo. Wala akong sagot. Three hours later, I still had no answer. Natulog na ako. Went back to bed. Woke up about, I think, two in the afternoon. No? Pagising ko. Ngayon, mas malala na. Kasi ngayon, galit na ako, tas gutom pa ako, alas just na ako nagising. Bad combination. Eh, diabetic ka pa, di ba? So, medyo bad trip ka na talaga. Bad combination. Buti nilang walang tsokolate na halabas sa bahay na ako, di binanatang ko lahat yun. So, I was like, man, you know, Lord, ano ba? And I began to crumble. I didn't call my wife, I didn't tell her, kasi it's really, nanay yan eh. So, it's really bad for her. So, nananahimik na lang ako, pa-text-text, kamusta na ganyan. Just, you know, and I began to look at the words of God. Remember these words. And Peter says, Lord, saan pa ba kami pupunta? Where else do we go? I want, I go to you. That's all I want to do. I want to go to you. Where else can we go? Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm nagre-rebelde ako, nagagalit ako, nagtatanong ako na ganito. I understand bilang tao, pinapayagan niyo ako, pero hindi okay yan. And so, Lord, where, where else do I go? And at the top of the hour, wala akong sagot. Wala akong sagot. 
don't know anything. I don't remember anymore after that. On my journal, I wrote a very short, I try to keep a journal about two or three, four times a week. I wrote on the, I know, on my journal, HSP. Yung po yung bagong disease ng anak ko na kinokolekta niya. Yung bagong yung disease, sila ko sa kanya, HSP. I don't remember the exact words, pero para sabi ko, panalo ka muna ngayon. Pero hindi ka magtatagal. Then I wrote in the word, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, I, Lord, my prayers are impotent if I don't come to you. So if I come to you, you require faith. But Lord, I have little faith. So I come to you with a little, little faith na lang. But Lord, you malit na faith, Lord, I'm going to believe in you. And the Greek word there in Hebrews 11, 6, he who comes to him must come in faith, believing. Wala akong kiniklaim na healing. I just want to be guided by the word. Walang patong-patong ng kamay, walang ganun. I so, said, Lord, it's too I believe. I have faith. Nagagaling, hindi ko alam. But Lord, whatever it is that you're doing, yung 99% na pagdududa ko, tapos 1% na lang na paniniwala, Lord, with that 1%, pestuo, I believe, I have faith. With my 1%, I will believe in everything you can do. That what you do is right. Ano gagawin ko kung walang Hebrews 11.6 nung araw na yun? Baka naglasig na siguro ako kahit di ako marunong uminom dahil di ako mahilig uminom. Dahil di po ako nalalasing. Baka nagwala na ako at nagsira ng bahay at nagwala na ako ano-ano. But with 1%, you may think today that God is asking you for so much para mapaayos yung buhay nyo. No, if you only had one, mustard seed size, maliit lang. Sabi mo sa parang, Lord, I don't know kung bibigay mo to, tatugunin mo to, papagalingin mo, ya, ano mo, bibigay mo sa akin, di ko alam. Pero Lord, I believe in what you are doing in my life. And whatever it is you're doing, I choose to believe you. It's too in the Greek. I believe. I believe. Not I believe you will give, but Lord, I just believe. Parang bata nakahawak sa kamay, I believe. Sa tayo pumunta, I believe. Then I realized that today. Let him decide. And his word is follow. Kasi ayoko, hindi ako nagbabasa ng Facebook doon, nakainis na eh. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to sign an appreciation because sometimes yung I'm praying for you and everything will be okay, sometimes nakairita kasi when things are not going okay. Huh? But please do that kasi I know you, you guys do that in love. Hindi ko kayo pinagbabawalan. Maybe that's where you are today. And where you are, maybe is where God, listen, wants you to be. Kung saan ka man ngayon, maybe dun ka gusto dalahin ng Panginoon. Because God wants you there. Because He wants you to understand that my word is your guide. Your guide. To teach you the truth. To mold you right. To discipline you and correct you. All to make me, to make you like me. To be mature and strong. I can say that to you today because three weeks ago, I did. Because hindi nangyari yun, I don't know what else. I don't know what else to do. Heavenly Father, your word like you said, is a lamp to guide our feet and a light to our path. I have brothers and sisters here this morning that need that today. Would you lead them there this morning? Please, Lord, I pray. Would you stand with me this morning? Maybe to you this morning, that's your prayer. Meron kayong mga decisions na kailangan nyo gawin. Ano kayo mga bagay na nais yung gawin? Uh, we want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Maybe napaisip ka, o oh, nga, no? Kaya pala lang gumugulo. I, 
have it started with the word. We'll start with the word. Pastor, I don't know where to start. Madali yan. Madali yan. We'll start with the word. Okay? Start with the word of God. You don't have to memorize it. Don't have to pray it. Basa lang. Lord, ano siya sabi? Ano sabi ko last week? Read the Bible thoughtfully. Ano siya sabi ng Panginoon dito? Ano siya sabi dito tungkol sa Panginoon? Ha? Anong pangako na pwede kong hawakan? What is it? Anong pinapagawa sa akin? Simple questions. Four questions. So if you're here this morning, that is your prayer. That is your prayer. Okay? That is your prayer. Same as mine. And you want to pray with us? We're going to stand here this morning with you. Okay? We're going to stand here and pray with you. I'm going to ask Pastor Dudes. Pastor, dito, total, sabay-sabay tayo pray. Pastor Paul, could you join me right here on my left side? Okay? We're going to stand here with you. They're not going to pray over you just yet. But just to let you know that we stand with you. Okay? That we stand with you here today. If you're here, would you come to the altar? Let's come and pray. Dato kami dito eh. Dami namin, just come and pray. Pastor, hindi ako member. It's okay. The altar in, this, in IBC is a place of comfort, of peace, of rest, and guidance. Let's all come and pray together, okay? If the Lord is speaking to your heart, maybe some of you are saying, Lord, what? Let, let me, Lord, let's listen to you today. Let me be guided by you today. Okay? Let's just come and pray. Let's just come and pray. Come and meet the Lord together. Come and seek the Lord together. Maybe some of us need to make that confession. Lord, saan pa po ba kami pupunta kung di sa'yo? Lord, this moment, right this very moment, we're going to come to you and we're going to seek you and we're going to pray with you. Okay? We're going to look at your word and we're going to look at your word. Maybe there's conflict in the job, conflict in the home. Kaibigan, lalo mong kailangan ang word of God today. Not just the preaching, but the word of God. Begin to look at the word of God. Begin to look at the Word of God and look and look. What does it say? What does it say? Read the Word. Get into the Word. Let the Word get into you. Don't read it religiously. Read it thoughtfully. Paano ba to, Pastor? Just read it thoughtfully. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We praise you and thank you for your goodness, your grace, your love, your incredible love for us. And so, dear Father, I pray that you would teach us, Lord, to look at your word, to crave for the word. So that because of the word, we will grow in full confidence of you. So that through the word, we will be guided to know what we are supposed to do, Lord. We have allowed the economy to dictate our our lives. We have allowed problems to dictate our lives. We have allowed every single thing to run and dictate our lives. Let us run and be dictated by you today. I pray, Jesus, I pray. Jesus, I pray. And in your mighty and wonderful name we pray. Praising you, Lord. Praising you, Lord. Guide us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. Turuan mo kami makinig habang nagbabasa ng salita mo, Panginoon. Turuan mo kalambot ang mga puso namin, Panginoon. Hindi matigas, Panginoon. Help us to be pliable, movable, moldable for you. So that we might grow, to grow up and mature and be strong. Not just para sa amin, Lord, but for others na sumusunod sa amin, Panginoon, ng mga asawa, anak, kaibigan, katrabaho, Panginoon. I pray that you would teach us that today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.